All right, welcome everyone and thank you for all coming out to the Emergency Operations Center today. Uh, we're here because two weeks ago I signed an executive order declaring the opioid epidemic a disaster and I called on members of our administration to take a new approach to address it. Uh, this crisis is the worst public health epidemic I've seen in my lifetime. It's killing more Philadelphians than AIDS at the peak of that epidemic. Countless individuals are suffering from substance use disorder and it truly breaks our hearts to think about what they're experiencing. Similarly, opioid addiction has driven up the number of individuals suffering street homelessness. In summer of 2017, there were approximately 900 unsheltered individuals in Philadelphia, 400 of whom were living on the streets of Kensington and Fairhill. By summer 2018, this rose to approximately 1,400 unsheltered individuals, 700 of whom were living in Kensington and Fairhill. This crisis has created unacceptable conditions for Kensington and the surrounding neighborhoods. Drugs are brought, bought and sold. Addiction has led to prostitution and our streets, schoolyards and parks are littered with trash, human waste and used syringes. Our kids, residents and commuters dodge illegal activity on their way to school and to work. Many are unable to take advantage of the playgrounds and public spaces they should be able to enjoy. I've heard their concerns at community meetings and they reach out through letters, emails and social media. Believe me, they're frustrated and for good reason. Despite the vast efforts and investments by the city, it's become apparent that our current approach is not working. We must take on a new strategy to tackle these complex issues. New partnerships must be forged and new resources must be brought to bear. So every day over the last two weeks, our Office of Emerg Emergency Management opened this Emergency Operations Center to representatives of dozens of city agencies, departments, and offices. Under the leadership of the Managing Director's Office, participants have been sharing information, identifying existing resources, analyzing where we have gaps, and organizing our new emergency response. It's an effort we're calling the Philadelphia Resilience Project, because Philadelphians have proven time and time again that we're resilient and there's nothing we can't overcome. We're a city of neighborhoods that look out for one another. As I've said many times before, there are no throwaway people. We owe it to our fellow Philadelphians to do everything we can to tap into our resilience and overcome this crisis once and for all. Now I'd like to acknowledge Mike DeBerdinas, our Managing Director, Brian Abernathy, First De Deputy Managing Director, and Noel Foison, Acting Director of OEM, for their leadership, as well as every participant in this activation. I also want to acknowledge Councilwoman Maria Quinones Sanchez, who is here, and Councilman Mark Squilla, who is on his way, who have been vocal advocates and change agents for their districts. Oh, he's here. We could not do this work without them and their staff, and I sincerely thank them for their partnership in this new endeavor. Now I'd like to ask uh, Councilman Sanchez and Councilman Squilla to come up and say a few words. Thank you. I want to um, publicly thank the mayor on his leadership in ensuring that not only are we working hard as a city to address this, but that we work smart. And part of working smart is what takes place in this room every day as departments figure out a way um, to better leverage the resources that we have on the ground and better partner with the community folks on the ground who are incredibly frustrated with what has happened. An occupation is not a tolerable, a tolerable situation. People homeless living in the streets is not a tolerable situation. And I believe that while government cannot resolve all of the issues, we owe it to the long-term residents trapped in this national crisis to try to do a better job. To do a better job means one, as the mayor said, an acknowledgement that working in silos is not going to uh, address the situation. That working in silos and not respecting the public safety and the children and the, and the seniors who are trapped and walk through this every day is not acceptable. So to the managing director's office team, Brian Abernathy, Tumar and all, I appreciate it. Mike D for his efforts for the last two years who's been on the ground with us. Um, what I most appreciate about this effort is what doesn't work gets fixed and if we have to start all over again we will because that's what the residents of Kensington and Fairhill deserve. A government that is nimble enough to acknowledge that this task that is all across the country that we are going to address this and try to make things work and every day the quality of life of those residents has to get a little better and that is the goal. Thank you so very much. 
Thank you. And I, I want to agree with my colleague, Councilwoman Sanchez, who has um, been at the forefront of this uh, with myself out on the streets and talking to the neighbors, uh, the residents, and the folks also under the tunnels and living on the streets of, uh, of Kensington and Port Richmond area. Uh, I, too, want to thank the mayor, uh, the administration, the MDO's office, uh, Mike D., Brian Abernathy, uh, for willingness to listen to us and uh, work with us on this. And, you know, we don't always see eye to eye on every issue, uh, but it's important that we feel like our, our messages are being heard and our messages that we're carrying from the community uh, to the administration. Uh, this is not an easy task when you have uh, collaboration by a whole bunch of different departments working with uh, mainly the police department, the MDO's office, even out street outreach and other independent bodies it gets complicated, but knowing that the administration, uh, the MDO's office and the mayor is willing to work outside the box to come up with other ideas on how to approach this situation. As you heard Councilwoman Sanchez say, uh, that the, how the neighbors are being infected uh, surrounding this epidemic and how the people that are actually living in the streets that are a part of the epidemic, how can we do a better job both to help them help themselves, but also help the neighborhoods that are suffering from this. And I know we're talking about Kensington, and Kensington is the epicenter of this, but this is a citywide problem. This is not just in Kensington, it is throughout the city of Philadelphia. And we need to look at all aspects of how the city could work uh, together and learn from this. Uh, we know that things that we try may not work, uh, but we're trying them. And I think that's the most exciting part. We're trying something different. We're looking at ways to make it better. Uh, for both the people that are on the streets and for the people affected, uh, surrounding it. Uh, so i, I got to give, again, the administration a lot of credit for willingness to, to do this. And I know that if we do this together, we will make a difference. Again, like Councilwoman Sanchez says, if there are things that we do try that do not work, then we'll try something else. And if there are things that we try that do work, we'll implement them in other areas also. So I'm uh, proud to be here today working with all of you and to understand that this is um, just a start. It doesn't solve any problems, it doesn't fix anything, but it's a start. And uh, we're gonna use any aspect that we can, any criteria that we need, and any other idea that anybody else has to think that uh, we'll listen to to implement in this situation to make this better. So thank you. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mike DeBerardinas, Managing Director. Uh, over the past uh, two years, the city has worked very hard on issues facing Kensington, in particular in the city in general, relative to the opioid crisis. Uh, the mayor has convened an opioid task force, and we're currently acting on recommendations of that task force that would improve treatment options and limit uh, the availability of prescription opioid drugs. We have spent tens of millions of dollars on police, EMS, behavioral health services, increasing shelter beds, Narcan distribution and training, clearing several encampments, picking up needles, clearing short dumping sites, sealing vacant properties, cleaning graffiti, and the list goes on. We have worked very hard to listen and to work closely with community organizations and residents to respond to their concerns as the same, at the same time as we try to move people into treatment. Despite these efforts, the challenges in Kensington and surrounding communities, hundreds of addicted and homeless, thousands of discarded needles, unsanitary living conditions, and an environment that no one should be forced to live in still persist. This requires collaboration and coordination. Our response requires collaboration and coordination on the city's part and bringing more stakeholders to the table. Two weeks ago, we activated our Emergency Operations Center and our Office of Emergency Management has been utilizing its experience in handling emergency relief efforts to organize the city's new response to this crisis in Kensington and the surrounding neighborhoods. I echo the mayor's gratitude and concern to Brian Abernathy, who has led this new effort, to Noelle Foisen and her team for taking this challenge up and applying their emergency management principles in new ways and have facilitated productive conversations to help us develop a new path forward in the next couple of months. Noelle is going to take us through the rhythm of our day-to-day -day operations here and what they're doing um, to 
uh, mount this new effort. Following Noel Tumar Alexander, the MDO's day-to-day -day lead in this effort will walk through the goals and priorities that have been established for each of the seven mission areas. Again, Tumar, thank you for accepting this new responsibility, and Brian, thank you for your excellent leadership in mounting this effort. So, Noel, there you are. Hi, I'm Noel Foisen. I'm the acting director of the Office of Emergency Management. We activate this room, the city's Emergency Operations Center, or EOC, to coordinate city services and emergency response during snowstorms and Super Bowls. The EOC brings together decision makers and allows for face-to-face -face problem solving to ensure our response is smart and decisive. The EOC model cuts through red tape and allows for quick action and course correction. For the past two weeks, we convened daily meetings to support the seven mission area leads identified in the executive order. During that time, the EOC has hosted nearly 70 individuals from 35 city agencies, departments, and offices. We have spent this time finalizing immediate, short-term, and long-term goals for each mission. Immediate goals should be completed within four weeks. Short-term goals will mark the end of the 90-day period in the initial executive order, December 31st, 2018. Long-term goals are defined as those expected to be completed within three to nine months, which is June 30th, 2019. Now that these goals have been identified, the EOC will move towards a more regular schedule with Monday and Friday all hands meetings, including executive leadership, and Tuesday through Thursday focus on project-specific planning to accomplish our goals. The Philadelphia Resilience Project is a marathon, not a sprint. Tumar will now walk you through the seven mission areas and their immediate, short-term, and long-term goals. Hello. <clears throat> My name is Tumar Alexander, Deputy Director of Intergovernmental Affairs for the Office of Managing Director. I'm going to ask our mission area leads to join me up in front, please. Thank you. The executive order references seven missions. Mission area one, cleaning major encampments, which is led by Beverly Woods of the Managing Director's uh, Office, Health and Human Services Cluster. Beverly, just put your hand up. Thank you. Uh, mission area two, reducing criminal activity, led by Evangela Manos, Managing Director's Office of Criminal Justice and Public Safety. Mission area number three, Reducing the number of unsheltered individuals led by Liz Hirsch, Office of Homeless Services. Mission Area 4, Reducing Trash and Litter, led by Tom Conway, Community Life Improvement Program. Mission Area 5, Reducing Overdoses and the Spread of Infectious Diseases, led by Dr. Carolyn Johnson, Philadelphia Department of Public Health. Mission Area 6, Increasing, increasing Treatment Options, led by Sandy Vasco, Department of Behavioral Health and Intellectual Disability Services. Mission Area 7, Mobilizing Community Resources, led by Damaris Feliciano, Managing Director's Community Clusters Office. Allow me to highlight some of our goals. The complete list of goals will be given out at the completion of this press conference. Mission Area 1, immediate goal, clear Frankfurt Avenue encampment by November 15th, prevent the formation of new encampments on all vacant properties near the Frankfurt Avenue encampment and surrounding areas. Short-term goal, begin outreach to Claire Emerald Street encampment by January 15th. Long-term goal, working with partners to develop strategy with stakeholders to prevent encampments from relocating or reforming. Mission area number two, reduction in criminal activity. Immediate goal, increase safety measures for children using foot and bike patrols and daily school checks. Create and strengthen existing safe corridor routes for travel to and from schools in the area. Implement police assisted diversion program in the East Police Division. Short term goal enhance a federal and state partnership to, partnerships to address narcotic supply and distribution. Long term goal create and strengthen safe mass transit corridors. Mission area three reduction, re, reduction in unsheltered population. Immediate, immediate goal. Identify a temporary site for a 24-hour navigation center, including respite and wraparound social services. Short-term goal, explore immediate housing, inspired by Seattle's use of the tiny house village model. Long-term goal, 
examine affordable housing strategies that include family reunification and employee employment assistance. Mission area four, uh, immediate goals starting conducting a large scale community cleanup along Kensington Avenue on Friday, November 2nd. Placement of needle disposal, needle disposal containers at McPherson Square and targeted septic, septic stations. Provide a temporary dumpster to support Frankfurt Avenue encampment closure. Recruit volunteers with lived experiences to assist with regular cleaning of the neighborhood. Use bicycles for, mo for mobile collection of discarded syringes. Long-term goal, pilot mechanical street cleaning program on major arteries in the Kensington area. Mission area five, reduction of overdoses and harm, redu harm reduction. Uh, immediate goal, prevent the transmission of HIV and hepatitis by screening, vaccination, and linking to medical care. Increase short-term goal, increase distribution of nal naloxone and related training to the community and public, public agencies. Long-term goal, implement opioid fatality review process. Mission area six, disseminate information on all treatment capacity access. I'm sorry, let me go back. Mission area six is increase medical assisted treatment to the community. Uh, disseminate information on all treatment capacity access. Deploy mobile outreach teams, including medical professionals to provide medic medical medication assisted treatment. Short term goal, expand warm handoffs between emergency departments and treatment options. Mission area seven, mobilize the community resources. Create a community calendar to encourage neighborhood engagement by highlighting programming across all mission areas. Identify potential funding partners. Create and train three, Philly 311 unit for specialized Kensington, Fair Hill information and assignments. Long-term goal is to build strategies for citywide awareness and engagement around the opioid issues. Like I said, we'll, we'll release the fuller list of all of our goals, both immediate, short, and long-term at the end of this press conference. All of these folks standing behind me today has put a lot of work and a lot of effort along with the agencies that Noel mentioned to come up with these goals. This is something we're very proud of to help the residents of Philadelphia. Thank you. Thank you, Tumar. I'm Brian Abernathy. I'm the first deputy managing director. Uh, the work that these teams have done in the last eight days has been significant, and the goals they laid out were ambitious, and the information that we just provided was a lot. Uh, teams have worked with multiple agencies, reported to multiple executives, received feedback from community organizations. As we move towards implementation, that work will continue and we'll make adjustments as needed. All of our work will be reported weekly at phila.gov slash opioids. And we've created a community advisory committee to help make sure we're defining success in a way that makes sense not just to government, but that makes sense to the leaders and the communities that we're trying to serve. What has struck me most about the work we've done over the past two years and what has been reinforced over the past two weeks is how strong this community is. These community members love their neighborhood. They support one another. They have found strength where others have found desperation. And how strong our staff has been. No other police division faces the types of issues that East Division faces. The courage that librarians have shown in reversing overdoses, the hope that outreach workers and doctors bring to those suffering with a horrible disease, and the determination of sanitation workers and CLIP staff as they pick up tons of trash and clean dozens of vacant lots again and again. These men and women are pushing a rock up a hill only to have it roll back on them every day, and yet they keep on pushing. They are the best of our city, and our city must do best by them. These men and women have defined success by helping one person at a time, cleaning one lot at a time, supporting one neighbor at a time. They've had to define success that way because the issues they're facing are so overwhelming and our systems are being crushed. We should all be inspired by the resilience of our staff and of these community members, and we must also remember to have a clearer vision of success. Our children must be able to walk to school safely to be able to play in parks and to be free of needles. Our seniors must be able to sit on their front porch that they don't have to clean human excrement off before they sit down. Business owners should be able to open their stores without dodging sleeping bodies. And those suffering with addiction should be able to find help and support and housing. The work our staff, our leaders, and our communities have done to date has been amazing, but the struggles we're facing are still significant 
and we will not be able to face those struggles alone. We're calling on our philanthropic partners, members of the business community, religious organizations, civic associations, and nonprofit organizations, residents, concerned citizens, and service providers to support Philadelphia's Resilience Project. Help those that suffer from substance use disorder survive their disease. Help families stay strong through some of the most trying times of their lives and help our community, our neighbors, endure and overcome the conditions of the, of, uh, that they struggle with every day. And I hope that we all can remember and learn from what Kensington's resilience really has been. Uh, at this point, we're happy to take your questions. Here's a question for the mayor. Um, um, when you put your hand on the Bible in 2016, this issue was happening in Kensington for three and a half years in the mayor. Why did it take you so Well, first of all, the issue was not as exacerbated as it is today. We've basically doubled our homeless population in the last year or so. So uh, we were addressing the problem as best we could. We recognized that it was billowing out of control, and now we're taking another approach. This is not easy work, um, and this is not an easy situation. Uh, this is a situation that's been created by the pharmaceutical industries who told people that these, these drugs were not addictive, by unscrupulous doctors who overprescribed, uh, and um, uh, people have been in the, in the clutch of this problem. Um, it's got nothing to do with my hand on the Bible, trust me. It's got to do with getting the work done, and we're doing it. And to acknowledge the fact that this issue has, has doubled, at least doubled in the last year. So it wasn't, it wasn't as bad as it, was, as it is now, and we're addressing it. There's nothing else I can do but address it, Bible aside. Well, Mayor, if I could follow up on that. What sure. is your vision of success? I mean, I know success is the reduction of death. Reduction of death. Now, you can hear what you want to hear from the federal government about um, supervised injection sites and other things and people getting locked up and all that. I wish they were as concerned about people dying. Uh, we are on, on the route again to at least probably 1,200 or so opioid deaths this year. Uh, and my, my definition of success is less death. Less death. And that's... The first, the first issue. The second issue is kind of putting this neighborhood back together again so that people can feel comfortable in their own homes, their children can walk to school, uh, and um, you know, we, did not, we did not ship heroin and opioids into this neighborhood. We are trying to, re re to push back uh, from what has been foisted upon us by other factors because of greed, and that's all this is about. Our gun violence is about greed because no one wants to stop selling guns. And our opioid addiction issue is about greed because these docs and these companies won't stop pushing this stuff on our people, period. I had, I had surgery a year and a half or so ago. I walked out of the hospital with 30 oxycodones and I asked my doctor why. Why do I need this? I think I use four. And then I went to Tylenol 800 milligrams and I was fine. Um, we're doing the best we can. I'm sorry. Um, last time the city cleared uh, the encampments at Kensington Avenue and Tulip, uh, there was a lot of preparation work in advance. The November 16th deadline is coming up fast. We have less than a month. Have there already been preparations underway? And also, the new navigation center will not have more beds for this building? So yes, outreach and recruitment never, ever stopped. Um, it is part of the city's infrastructure. But yes, they have continued to do outreach throughout Kensington as well as those hot spots, including the encampments. And we um, recently um, transitioned those who were in our Kensington Nav Center into other housing, each of them has housing plans so that we could empty out that facility to um, have a place for people who are leaving the encampments to be. So how many beds, uh, emergency beds are in there? 40. The, there are not emergency beds in Kensington, 40 beds available in the Navigation Center, which was specifically um, put into place for the encampment closures. And there's a new Navigation Center opening up on the 16th? There is the same Navigation Center that we opened for the original encampments, and the people who are in that Navigation Center have housing plans, so they have moved on into other housing and, you know, um, so we essentially emptied it so that we would have a place for 40 people leaving the encampment on Frankfurt Avenue. Okay, so there are 40 beds? For yes. All yes. At least 40 beds at that navigation center. Thank you. Sure. 
Other questions? Aubrey? You know, I, we met with a number of the community leaders earlier this week, um, you know, and I think, I don't want to speak for them, but I think they're cautiously optimistic. I think the, the work that we're doing, and, and I, I want to commend the managing director, I, I think the work he has led over the last two years has been significant. Um, you know, and if, if you, it's literally tens of millions of dollars, and if you include FY19, it's over $30 million in two years in, in one community. Um, but clearly we haven't been doing something right, and so it's time to adjust. Um, I think the teams that we've put together, the cross-collaboration, um, the ability to move nimbly, uh, quickly, to be able to fail fast and, and to recognize those mistakes and move forward, um, and the accountability that we're building into the system is something that I think has given residents some comfort. Uh, it is a different approach. It is taking everything that all of our different departments are doing and putting it through one uh, through one chain of command in, in a way that people can easily see. Um, and we can easily identify gaps. Uh, and that was the in, that's the intent uh, of incident management. Uh, and so, you know, honestly, in three months, I might turn around and say, well, hell, that didn't work. Um, and let's try to something new. Um, I'm not, I, I believe this is the right path forward. Uh, I believe that we're going to be, uh, see success. Um, but if it's not, to Councilwoman Sanchez's point, we're going to try something new. Uh, what has happened in Kensington um, and what we, as a city, not just city government, but we as a city, as city leaders, have allowed to happen in Kensington uh, is wrong. We have to uplift that community if we're going to continue to lift up Philadelphia. Um, we have to figure out how to solve the problems that Kensington is facing because it is endemic and systematic or systemic through the rest of the city. And I'm confident that the city and this administration is determined to figure out how to solve those systemic problems. Other questions? All right. Thank you all very much. Thanks.